Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you're new to this series, we built this five-acre pond over the past year, and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated, and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay, and we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place, and then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad, and not long after that, we stocked it with these little two-inch aggressive bass. So one of the projects for today is going to be adding some lily pads to the pond, but before we get into that, I want to give you an update on the fish. So while I consider this a bass pond, the bluegills are quickly starting to steal the show. They're always active out here around the feeders, eating the protein pellets and growing like crazy. And if you recall, back during the pond build process, we put a bunch of pea gravel out in hopes that they would use it as a spawning area. And you gotta love it when a plan comes together because the bluegills have made beds and nests in every one of those pea gravel areas. You can see there off to the right of the duck house, each of those little circles is a bluegill bed. And if you look closely, you can see the black dots in some of those circles are bluegills. And one last spot over there by the cypress trees we put in. But I wanted to get a closer look, so I put a GoPro underwater near some of those bedding areas. And just like bass, bluegills are nosy, and anytime there's a change in structure or scenery, they have to come and check it out. And you can see how the protein is putting the weight on them, but most of these are probably the bigger females hanging out around these nests. <laughs> and we get the same reaction from a lot of them. They come up, and when they saw the camera, they say, nope, I'm out of here. Either they're just camera shy, or they're actually trying to knock the GoPro out of the beds. I can't quite tell which one it is. Now, one of the most common topics throughout the entire pond build series was adding vegetation to the pond. We've got a wide variety of vegetation in our backyard pond, but the difference is it's on a much smaller scale and easier to control. And every pond biologist I talked to recommended not adding any vegetation to the pond at all. But most of you that know me know how passionate I am about frog fishing, so I had to come up with a solution to get some lily pads in the pond. And after scouring the internet, I found the perfect solution. Artificial floating lily pads. And they have two different varieties. One of them is a cluster of smaller pads, and the other is this big single pad. And another added benefit to these lily pads is that they'll provide shade. Because even though we have a lot of structure in the pond, outside of the dock and a couple other areas, there's not a lot of shaded spots for the fish to hang out in. And I like the design of these because it has the loop on the bottom side of the pad that you can add a bungee cord to. And it also has these floating tubes that cover up the bungee cord and make it snagless. So I've got two areas in mind. The first spot is over here by Alcatraz Island. And then the next spot is over here by the Oak Throne. So I'm over here delivering some lilies and check out this little guy. A newly hatched turtle out here sunning on the Oak Throne. That's a cute little guy. So I just got done installing the lily pads. I just added a half a cinder block to the bottom and clustered them up together. They look great to me. And the easiest way to find out if the fish are going to like them is to make a few casts this afternoon. So if you missed our previous videos, we built this advanced duck house that's got solar panels, a splash pad, and even an indoor aquarium. And we let you all pick the name for the duck house, and we'll be announcing that winner here in just a second. But first, let's see what wildlife stopped by to check it out this week. So this time of year, ducks migrate south for the winter, and each day we're seeing new wild ducks fly into the pond. So the anticipation of the first duck entering the house is killing me. So the first pair of ducks got really close to the island, and I'm not sure that they ever saw the duck house and never made their way over there to it. Next up, we got what I'm pretty sure is a big hawk flying down to the island to get a sip of water out of the pond. And it looks like he's eyeing the house, just like the bald eagle that we had last week fly in. And I also want to introduce you to a new local bird that's been hanging around the duck house called a kingfisher that almost look like a woodpecker, but they're actually pretty good hunters. Check out the accuracy on this guy as he flies down and grabs one of the threadfin shad out of the pond. Now, typically I don't like birds taking our fish out of the pond, but this little guy can probably only eat one or two a day. All right, this is our closest encounter yet as one of the diving ducks finally spots the duck house. And the little dock there on the right is weight activated. So if he steps up on the dock, that activates the splash pad. And he 
said, no, I'm out of here. Hmm. Better luck next week. Now it's time for another game day recipe, and today we're going to be cooking smoked venison queso dip. And this video is brought to you by Kamikoto Knives. We've been using these knives since we started the pond build, and I'm still extremely impressed with them. They're made out of high-quality Japanese steel, and they always have a very sharp edge. And the recipe has three different types of cheese. One pound of Colby Jack, one pound of Pepper Jack, and two pounds of Velveeta. And you get all of that cut up and added to the meat of your choice. And today we're going with two pounds of lean venison. Next up, it's time to chop up one red onion, one tomato, and if you like a little kick, one jalapeno, and some green onions. Look, I made a bunny. Now we're gonna add the red onions, cheese, and meat, and smoke it on the grill until everything melts. Once the cheese is melted, add the tomatoes and jalapenos, and it is time to eat. But the Kamikoto knives come in several different sets, but our favorite is probably the Kampeki. It seems to be perfect for our needs. It comes with a seven inch vegetable knife, a eight and a half inch slicing knife, and a five inch utility knife. But don't just take it from me. These knives are used by Michelin star chefs all across the world. And they also come in this nice wooden box, which makes it perfect for a gift. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a link down in the video description that'll give you $50 off a knife set. All right, time to see how big the bass have gotten. I'm gonna fish right around these lily pads. And if I had to guess, they're already hanging out around them. There's one. Got him. Spit it out. But, it's hanging out right up under those lily pads. Just like I thought it might. There's one. Got him. Right there by the lily pads. <laughs> Bats are just curious. You had to go in there. He's probably looking for a frog. So this is the second one I've caught that's got a little green right there on his nose, if you can see it. You might can see it a little bit. That's a unique feature. But when they're pale like that, he's got some green on his back too. But when they're pale like that, that means they've been hanging out deep a lot and spending a lot of their time out there in these deep brush piles, I bet. But let's go ahead and get this guy back. You can tell he or she's been eating good and they are definitely big enough to tag now so i think maybe in the next video we're going to start tagging these guys Alrighty. now it's time for an update on the two pond mascots if you recall we caught a small tiger bass out of the pond and named him tiger and a copper nosed bluegill and named him copper and the day finally came where tiger was no longer viewing copper as a friend but instead started looking at him as a meal and even though there's no way that Tiger could eat Copper, he was constantly chasing him around the tank. So it left us no choice but to release Copper back into the pond. So now, Tiger's in a tank all by himself and ready to devour anything that comes in his path. So let's watch him eat. So we asked you all to name the duck house and leave your comments over on Nate Makes channel. But since Nate's the one that built it, I let him choose the comment. And the name of the duck house is... Duckingham Palace. There were several of you that suggested that name, but one of the first ones was DeSantis Outdoors. So DeSantis, send me your address. We're going to send you out a prize package. And you're now also a qualifier for our next giveaway, which will be a weekend trip out here at the Crimson Oak Pond. So congratulations, bud. All right, while we watch a night lapse over the pond, I have to take a second to address some fraud that's been happening on YouTube with several of our followers. So as many of you know, there's always some sort of scam or con out there on the internet. But this one in particular seems to be working better than others because I've had dozens of my followers reach out asking if it was legitimate or not. And as you know, we do a lot of giveaways on our channel. And basically what's happening is people are creating an account using the same image that we use on our channel as the thumbnail. 
and using a cell phone number as their channel name. And then for instance, when you reply and enter one of my contests, they'll reply to your comment and say you've won a prize package, text them at that number. And I have to be very clear that since I've been on YouTube, I've never requested money from anybody and I never will in the future. So if you ever think you're talking to me and I ask for money, you know for sure it's not me. So me, just being the curious person that I am, I had to figure out how this guy was conning people out of their money. So I bought a throwaway phone and sent him a text. And let's take a look at the conversation. So his comments are on the left in gray and my comments are on the right in green. So right out of the gate, I wanted to find out how much this guy actually knew about our channel and find out if he was a longtime follower or just somebody in a different country. So my first question was, how big is Moby now? And he dodges the question, so I had to follow up with another one asking how big Moby was. And he continued making small talk, but I figured the third time was a charm. How big is Moby now? <laughs> and this is the moment I found out the guy has no clue about my channel when he said 3.5 millimeters. And just for reference, that's about the size of an inch. <laughs> he must have thought Moby was a goldfish. But I had to play with him a little bit, so I had to ask him a technical question about the duck house. But I threw him one of those well-known trick words flux capacitor, and that's something that doesn't really exist. I just wanted to see if he'd catch on. But he also failed the second test and said that it would overheat the flux capacitor. And his trick is telling people they want a prize package, but they have to pay for the shipping and usually request $50. And the last easy tell that I was being scammed is when he asked for my address, I gave him the Pentagon's address and he didn't bat an eye. And it's happening so much I felt like I had to address it. So be smart out there, folks. Ask the tough questions, and usually they'll reveal themselves. All right, we got another installment of the peanut picnic table. We put out pecan halves, sunflower seeds, Brazil nuts, pistachios, and peanuts. And we try to draw the little squirrels out of the woods or the deer out of the fields. And we got a camera right here set up to see what comes out. And the first one to take a seat at the buffet is a spike. Next up, George Jones the possum. He's a regular here at this table. And next up are the bandits. Now there's something really satisfying about watching raccoons crack these peanuts, but my problem with them is that they always tear up my cameras. And I know it has to be them because they're always the last animal on the camera before it quits sending videos. And when I show up, the antenna's torn off and they've made a mess. Now that the food is scarce, I hope they hop down and leave the camera alone. Oh no. <laughs> I can't believe it's happening again. <laughs> so this time he didn't tear it up. It looks like he actually redirected the camera so it would shine down there up under the picnic table and they could find those peanuts that fell onto the ground. Looks like my camera survived the raccoons this time. So if you've been following along with the videos, you've seen we got a new pack of coyotes on the farm. It's around five or six of them. And throughout the summer, they really got along with the deer. But we were waiting to see what happened when the weather cooled off. And unfortunately, you can tell they're getting a lot more aggressive and they're starting to chase the deer. And that's unfortunate because we've got a lot of fawns this year. And check these two cute little guys out. One of them's full of spots and the other one's almost lost his spots. They came into the pond area right before dark and I started feeding the deer right out here under one of our bird houses so we could get a little bit closer look. So pay close attention to the tree line back there and the black objects moving around in it. And we had a mystery animal climbing through the trees in our last video and I think we finally solved it. And my best guess is it's those raccoons that were terrorizing my camera earlier. Now that I got a better look, I'm pretty sure it's them.
And for some positive news, a doe had some triplets, and that's the first time we've ever seen that on the farm. And so far, they've all survived the coyotes. And so I'll be keeping an eye on these guys, seeing if they survive. And if the coyotes continue to be a nuisance, we may have to trap them and get them out of here. Look at those bass out there chasing Shad in the background. You gotta love it. And some more busting early the next morning. And this is the reason I love watching these cameras at night. You just never know what you're going to see. So it looks like we got two young spikes laying down. Getting some rest. And then George Jones just wandering around. <laughs> deer aren't sure what to think about him. So I started feeding the deer right here. And man, they did a number on my cypress tree. Can't be having that. So I got some more of that corrugated pipe. I'm gonna put that down there to protect it. Let's go look and see who's the culprit. Aha, uh -huh. just a small longhorn spike. Roughing my trees up. And now it's time to feed the world's most aggressive bass, Mr. Moby. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along with this pond build and all the crazy wildlife. And not to mention our pet bass, Bonnie, Clyde, and Moby will be going into the pond soon. But I hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.